The following episode is brought to you by Poison City Brewing, proud makers of Durban Poison Cannabis Lager, the beer that invites you to live your poison. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution is here. It's real hip hop music from the soul, y'all. Yeah, check it. Uh, how's it going, guys? Yeah. Uh, my name is Nasi Piora Zwane Spongo, and I'm here again with another episode of Sludge Underground Podcast. Today, we are doing something completely different. You know, we feel that, you know, being part of the scene is very important, you know, to give everyone, an, uh, you know, like an equal opportunity and whatnot. And be very much focused on, you know, getting bands on the show, you know, the alternative scene, getting some hip hop artists on. And, you know, throughout our journey in the, in the last four years or so, we've noticed a lot of, you know, there have been some complaints. It's not all positive. And basically, this is what this episode caters towards. Um, it was a couple of weeks ago when I was on Twitter and I saw... A uh, certain lady that uh, basically tweeted something really cool. I'm going to read it out to you. I've got it right here. Um, she was just saying, one day I will host a webinar and I want to talk about the problems and possible solutions for the music industry. Artists are really going through it right now more than before. And uh, this, this lady, this special lady here is the, the lady that I'm actually interviewing today. I don't want to mention the name now. I want her to let us know who she is, you know, what she's about. And then you're going to tackle, you know, the issue at hand hand so special guest of the day please introduce yourself let the people know who you are and we can just go from there all right thank you so much for having me sludge podcast i really do appreciate this opportunity hi everyone my name is Zamakumalo, and i am a cultural curator so basically just to break that down that's basically looking at the culture specifically the one thing that i've had always interest in is is the creative industry and and specifically also in this conversation we'll be dealing with the music industry so i've dealt with a lot of um music artists i've interviewed quite a lot of music artists from Zex Franduini to um, DK Madala and everything like that. So I've interviewed them, you know, gotten to know who they are and what they're all about. And just basically also, uh, you know, I know that a lot of people hate this term also, but a person that loves creating content as well, just looking at what is going on, like I said before. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Just a culture curator, just keeping up with the culture, trying to make everyone aware of the culture. And that's me in a nutshell. You know, it's 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 really exciting times, you know, being able to get, you know, people, you know, as professional as you are as well. It's just, you know, it's it's such a huge privilege and I really look forward to, to us getting into this chat. Now what I really want to start off with is, you know, being in the field that you are in, you know, what sort of led you to sort of, you know, wanna get into it and, you know, sort of let us know about the culture and whatnot. Is this something that basically stems from, you know, your love maybe for the local music? and whatnot like just give us a bit of background in terms of that there so like you correctly put it that there was there's always been a love for it you know and um you know at face value sometimes you see something and you're like so in love with it and you're just like i want to be a part of that i want to i want to be a part of that journey as well you don't know what it is but you just there's something that you know um when have you ever been to a concert before and you've seen an artist that you like and this artist has a way of like hypnotizing you with their songs and everything like that and even their whole set it just mesmerizes you and you know what whatever this person is a part of i want to be a part of that and for me i've always loved music and i've always loved artists and it's always interesting to find it behind the stories because um as i grew up um loving music and and loving everything that it entails i learned that there's always two sides to every story, you know. You may see the positive, but the behind the scenes is a different story. And as I, like I said, as I grew up, I saw that the behind the scenes were a bit more interesting than the actual scenes itself. Because the, when you're looking at the actual scene as an audience member, you're seeing the finished product. But when you are a person that's a creative and are part of, you know, the journey of the behind the scenes, it's something that is so, it's so what's the word that I'm looking for? It's so, it's so nice and special to you. So for me, I've always wanted to be a part of the journey. I've always wanted to document the journey. And I just felt that I wanted to be that person that although I may be behind the scenes, I want to garner some power that people can recognize that, you know what, this is what Zama did. This is her work and everything like that. 
Mm. Yeah, that is very special. Now, let's tackle your tweet. The the one thing that actually led to us, you know, being here and doing this episode. You know, you mentioned that you're going to be wanting to talk about, you know, some of the problems and any possible solutions. Before we get to solutions, though, let's let's just tackle the problem now. Um, what are the problems that you sort of seen, you know, in your experience? Okay, so um, firstly, what we're seeing is that people have lost okay so spe- specifically dealing with um creatives or artists um you know i've seen that a lot of artists have lost gigs have lost um you know hope and motivation and you know unfortunately because of the powers that be they have not ably set up um funding or they haven't set up a, a way to help artists but the unfortunate thing is that also um when that that has happened um we we tend to forget that artists are the reason why we're able to motivate ourselves as 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 everyday people to actually motivate ourselves to do anything that we need to do so now if you are not giving hope to the very same people that motivate you what does that say that that is that is a huge problem for me and for me also i felt that you know the the fact that people are not even able to 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 get funding for their basic necessities and they are these people are breadwinners at the end of the day that's a huge problem that's a huge problem because at the end of the day um how how is it that we are showing our appreciation for our artists because it's very easy to point fingers and say that no 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 you guys didn't do much and you guys are dying broke whereas we aren't even doing anything to support them so for me that was that was that was a huge underlying problem that for the lockdown it was already just a cut off section to say that no nope, you guys don't have to worry about it because we don't need you anymore whereas we do need musicians because they are or we need artists at the end of the day because they are the people who source our creativity they are the people that source our motivation at the end of the day so that was yeah that was that was pretty much a, a huge issue for me and another problem that i i'm starting to see that it's slowly not immensely but slowly turning over was that there's a huge smoke and mirrors that are happening within our music industry where people put on this facade that um they're the best at what they do and when in actuality they really really are not and we're not giving credit to those that deserve it so i i've i've I've, i just felt that it, it it's it's very shameful that people just tend to um overpower those that are actually good at what they do they're creative at what they do but they so overpowered because of the people that are in high positions or people that have made much more money that for me is just a huge problem unfortunately so it it so basically just to round it all off it's basically the funding no support for our creatives and overpowering them as well because it seemingly seems like they they don't have a voice to put out they 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 art or or they don't have a way of putting themselves out positively basically so now when we're basically looking at issues like that, you know, the whole financial situation and whatnot, I think the one thing that we also just need to ask ourselves is, you know, how would the solution sort of come in when we're looking at finances, you know, considering that they're like in 2020, like right now, you'll find that, you know, every every second person is like you know an artist these days so how do you then you know coming through say now i am like a billionaire that i'm not even gonna call myself a gatekeeper but someone of power how do i then <laughs> like like how do i then decide who is it okay so this is the person i'm going to be you know giving funds to this is who i'm giving for like how do how do these the, the powers that be sort of decide who would say okay this is where we are gonna sort of plant our sort of finances and whatnot okay so for me i'm glad you've actually asked that question for me in and as much as yes i've complained about the problems that are there as well um artists also need to realize that number one when it comes to their own image the image that they would want people to see they've got to polish up on that because now like i said before on my previous point that we see a lot of smoke and screens um that are happening within the industry and slowly it's sort of within the whole lockdown it's slowly um having this position of like it's resetting things so now it's no longer of a story of um no we're gonna we're gonna make you out look like a bad boy and everything like that whereas you're not it's more of you need to be authentic you need to be you need to be good with your your own brand at the end of the day because 
if you are not authentic within what you are doing or what you are saying to the audience, audience is very quick to pick up on that. I'm sure you've. I'll just give an example, like what you said right now. I'm sure um, on Twitter you've seen cases whereby celebrities have been exposed for what they've been doing and things of that nature. And like I said before, it's important that you need to be authentic with your branding. Make sure that you connect with people that understand um, the 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 the. the um, the, the, the brand that you are and what is it that you are trying to achieve within your goals and everything. This is the time when you should be shooting your shot more than anything because this is the time when people have time on their hands to be collaborating with people. Be it locally or be it internationally, people are opening up more and more now. And now we are seeing a lot of people starting to collaborate, even people that we didn't think that would collab collaborate with one another. This is the time when you should be collaborating and opening up yourself even more. Because now, if you're going to keep yourself and be like, oh, I can't because I'm scared of their followers, you'll find more often than not that they'll be like, you know what? I actually dig Zama's sense of style. I dig, I dig Zama's sense of fashion. And because she's authentic in what she's doing, I will resonate with that. And that's where the funding comes in because you're authentic with your, your branding. You're good with what you, you're able to do, you know. So I'll just I'll just give a, a random example. Um, someone like comes up this small. Comes up this small. Man knows. It's, he, he's all about Amap Iyan. And he's such a, a plain person, like he's a very J. He's a guy that's coming from Pretoria and everything like that. But he knows exactly what he's, he wants. He knows exactly where he's aiming for. And that's why a lot of people resonate with him. I mean, recently he took out his, um, he released his album, the 27 songs. And I remember on Twitter, people are like, yo, 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 guys, 27 songs. That's a bit, a bit too much. People started from number one to, to number seven without skipping one track, but they enjoyed it at the end of the day. And that's where, where the, the key factor lies. What is your unique selling point that you want people to relate with at the end of the day? And why I specifically say as to what is that one thing that makes you unique or what is your unique selling point is because that's going to, that's what's going to make you different from other people because there's so much competition and it's very, very stiff and rife. But if you have that one factor that will make you break out from other people, you are able to just, you're going to soar. You're going to soar like a, an eagle. Yo, I really love how 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 like you're going in in depth and stuff. It's it's actually something for anyone who's a creative as well who might be you know kind of lost in terms of what they want to do. It's 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 really nice to get some some professional sort of perspective and and sort of guidance in terms of how they should go about that. It's really special. And the one thing you know with Slow Underground, like I said before we started the interview, it's literally we just wing everything. And you know part of that spirit right now actually leads me um, to a tweet that I saw yesterday from from uh he's a photographer uh casey waves he he tweeted something that went something casey along the line yeah yeah that tweets yeah yeah where he says do not look for recognition in durban people here will not recognize you for anything just do your best and focus on yourself do not try save the city it is beyond saving do you resonate with what uh casey is saying here um yeah to some degree yes yes i i, I actually do resonate with what he's saying um you know um I, I agree with the fact that he says that you need to focus on what you're doing because there will be people that will recognize you. Um, he, yeah, it's, it's just a very, very, um, a very sore topic because there's a lot of us, such as myself and yourself, who um, who want to see the best out of Durban. We want Durban to grow, but unfortunately, because of the um, the limitations that we are faced with, it's very hard for us to grow the way that we should be going um, going at. And this is this is why you find that a lot of other people um, tend to go to other provinces because um, they're gonna be able to fund their dreams. Um, I've had I've had situations whereby brands come to us. I'll I'll give you an example. There was a specific event that had happened in Durban. It first started in Johannesburg. Johannesburg was Tops, it was amazing, and what have you. Come through to Durban, there was, literally, I will tell you, the, the brands decided to, to treat Durban Nights like crap. And that upsets us quite a lot. That, ups that upsets us as Durban Nights because it shows the level of respect that we get, unfortunately, here. Yeah. And it also shows that what is it that Durban Nights are actually saying to people in Johannesburg? Because if you're able to go to Johannesburg and treat Johannesburg people correctly, but come to Durban and treat them like crap, it, it's very painful, 
you know, because they've also heard that, no, you don't need to worry about Derek. Derek people, people are slow. So why should you even stress yourself? And hence why I'm busy talking about that point, because it shows that even when you've left Durban, the, what is the mentality like, unfortunately? So that when other people, other, other people that are coming into Durban, what is the, what is the, um, what is the, the behavior that's happening? Also, another point that I want to bring up is that Durban is very finicky with the talents that, that they are going to accept or they're going to deny, unfortunately. That's, an, that's why I said that I understand exactly where Casey is coming from with that point because Durbanites are very, very finicky with their talents. And hence why I also spoke about the limitations as well because you may be a talented person, but if maybe you're not popular or don't have the right connects, unfortunately, it's going to be very, very hard for you. And hence why I understand why people tend to actually go, um, you know, elsewhere to, to, to try and achieve their dreams. That is, that is very solid. And just looking at, you know, some of the issues that you mentioned earlier in terms of financing and sort of not having, you know, I guess enough platforms and whatnot. Um, I, I want us to look at, um, I'm sorry, and another point that you actually said there was, you know, getting your image right and getting things right. So what you find in Durban is something that I've, I've observed is that you will find uh, like so many artists that you, you'll find that they have all of that right. He's got his image right. You know, he's, he's putting out enough content you know financially you'll you'll find that maybe you know he's he's getting by you know or, or he or she is getting by as an artist like where do you think things then go wrong sort of in durban like for me i'll make i'll make a quick example um that ties in with what you were, you were talking about earlier in terms of you, you know why you love what you do in terms of going to a show being mesmerized by an artist and whatnot um there are so many or actually one or two artists that i saw during the f Ink days um, when effing party was still a thing here in Durban artists that would sort of be mm. on the open mic lineup and artists that I felt when I saw them was like damn these guys these guys should be headlining what is this guy doing mm. you know on, on the open mic mm. stage and then that was when you'll find that okay I'll approach them we'll talk get them on the podcast you listen to the to this guy's story and you hear that this person has been putting in the work so then where does it mm. sort of then go wrong in Durban because you'll find that these artists are actually they're working um, and 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 their music is dope and everything. What 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 is wrong exactly specifically now in Durban? I mean, I'll mention the likes of you know or Trevor Anderson. I'll mention the likes of Chris Snakes. I'll mention you know all all these guys who should be if you actually look at it headlining you know these Durban shows. Where does it go wrong here? Um, you know, I feel that it uh, first of it 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 really depends on i'll just put it out here it's each to their own but the overall issue that i'm seeing that a lot of artists are facing num- well that all the artists are doing number one when it comes to how to how you treat the media the media is your key people those are your key people onto how is it that you get ahead i'll i'll, I'll just i'll just say that I've, I've i've dealt with artists whereby they they just just talk to you anyhow they treat you anyhow or they just don't even respond back to their uh, their messages when you want to do a feature on them. And then it's just like, but but guys, you're the ones who are wanting a feature now. So if you are treating me like crap and you expect me to write a feature on you, how's that going to help anyone? That's not going to help anyone at the end of the day. How you treat the media says a lot about you. You know what I mean? And even if you're on the come up, like I've, I've done a platform called Itego Connect. So if anyone would like to do, to do a feature and everything like that, um, the name of my platform is called Itego Connect where I profile uh, creatives and basically what they've done. And I've had a situation whereby people come to me and they say that um, Zamam would like for you to do a feature on us and everything like that. But when I look at their profiles, their profiles are not okay. Their <laughs> profiles are not okay. They, 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 they are not okay and i'm just like are you being serious right now like are you being serious right now you expect me to write something on you but you can't even get the basics right how's that gonna help anyone at the end of the day because you don't know the connects that i have that might propel you even more for your image but you can't even treat me with the most basic respect that's the unfortunate thing as well you know and i'm not even gonna like connections help connections help quite a lot because you may be wanting to achieve to a certain um, to, 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 to headline at a specific event, but because you don't have the right connects for it, unfortunately, it's not gonna it's not gonna um, it's not gonna work out for you. Not like 
in other provinces like Johannesburg, the one thing I must say about Johannesburg that I like a lot, that's very different from Durban. Johannesburg um, tends to, Johannesburg, um, the creative industry, they tend to take a chance, even on people that are still start, starting out, they tend to take a chance on them. Here in Durban, we have a huge problem that people have to be like, no, 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 uh, well, Zama, you haven't worked for five years, so I can't take a chance on you. Yet you don't know what type of value do I add onto what is it that you need me to add value to. So it's mainly connects and it's mainly um, how you brand yours. I mean, how you um, connect with the media because the media, they're very, very finicky. And if you say something wrong or do something wrong, it's a very slippery slope for you, unfortunately. Yeah, and I really like what you said there, you know, in terms of how people interact, you know, with media. You know, before we move on, I want this to sort of, you know, give those people, you know, sort of food for thought. Anyone who has sort of approached you in recent times, maybe has a blog or is running something or a platform of some sort and maybe their page isn't really up to scratch. Because the one thing I've also noticed with, with Durban creatives in general is that they are very easily offended you know very you, you know you could tell someone yeah. listen bro this isn't really you know what you know up to up to standard and that person automatically that person's like oh you're a hater you this and that so what sort of food for thoughts would you give on anyone who approaches you with the table connect and is like listen you know i'd like for you to know write something about us what sort of tips and pointers would sort of enhance you know their chances to sort of get on platforms like these Okay, so the first thing I would suggest that you do is learn have learn how to respect people. Respect goes a very long way. That's not just a saying that people just say just for mad. That's a saying that people say because it's something that's legit. And I'm a person that is big on respect. If you disrespect me, just know that it's just pretty much over for you. And um, it that just goes on an overall thing because even you as well. Like I may I, I may be disrespectful, and you may just have a sour taste in your mind and uh, about the way that you're going to interact with me going forward. Anyway respect goes a long way number two your branding has to be on point you may not have the followers right now whereby um you're still building yourself but your branding has to be on point when i say branding i'm talking about your images your images have to be on point your profile when i'm talking about your profile what have you done that i Kumalo, can take into consideration for me for putting you onto my platform or me saying to to someone else that maybe has a bigger platform than mine listen here's zama's um blog or what zama's zama's an artist and what have you why don't you you know take into consideration of putting um zama onto your blog for instance that takes you a very long way when you have high risk images when you have a good profile when you have a person that is able to speak to managers or even yourself hence why i say that respect is such a big thing it will take you very, very far. Um, learn how to answer your messages. If you can't answer your messages or your emails or what have you on time, let the person know, communicate with them because communication takes it's a, it's, will also take you um, very, very far as well. Um, what's another point that I wanted to add? Oh, yeah, feedback. Feedback is essential. Feedback is what is going to make you grow. You need to grow a thick skin and not get offended by every single comment that people throw at you. Some people will say to you, look, your work is not the greatest. This is what you need to improve on, like what I'm doing right now. Because now if you're going to be coming in, into a plat onto a platform or approaching someone thinking you're Da Vinci, someone's going to be like, no, sweetie, it doesn't work that way. No, you're, you're far from Da Vinci. In fact, you're, no, no, you're not even a novice, you're an amateur at this stage. No experts, no, no one started out as an expert. Everyone started out as an amateur and you grow day by day by it. So you shouldn't be offended by the feedback, even till today. Everyone, every one of us still gets feedback. That's how we grow stronger. That's how the artists that we see right now, your AKAs, your Caspers, your Moses or whoever, they are still growing because they realize that, you know what, at the end of the day, I need to get feedback on what I'm doing because what I may think is great, someone else may not, and they may be able to spot mistakes that I don't see. So that, that's, that is basically, those are the tips that I feel would definitely help you. Oh yeah, last thing, invest in yourself. Mm. Invest in yourself so much. Um, what I mean by that is that, like I said before, have high risk images. Invest in your equipment if you feel that you need equipment that will better yourself. Invest in um, 
learning to grow more go into youtube programs as to what is it that you need to do youtube videos will help you youtube is the university of life i've always said this like it's the best thing ever because it helps people out and you get to learn so much on it when when i also speak about investing people can definitely see the difference between a person that's invested in themselves and a person that hasn't a person who is pretty prominent in this and who has invested in himself time and time again is nasty c Nasty is a huge example of a person that has invested himself, he's invested in his time, and he has been able to grow with within what he has been doing. So that's what we mean. And it's so easy for a person to actually get to where they need to be. Yes, there may be limitations, like I said, but if you are able to take the advice that you've been given from other people, use it to your own advantage and propel yourself the way that you need to be, you'll find that you'll also be you also have international people knocking at your door wanting to work with you. Yeah, like uh, I just uh, just another point, you know, with, with some of the things that you're saying, it reminds me now of, you know, sort of a topic that really often comes up with the artists, especially in the hip hop scene. A lot of the artists that come through, they usually, I, I specifically remember uh, one of the artists, they're sort of like, a, I think it was like a trio, they call themselves the 9-7 Experience, and anyone who listens to the episode will remember that they were basically calling out a, a specific DJ who basically originates, you know, from Durban. I'm not going to mention any names, but, um, you know, oh. that specific DJ who then basically heard one of their songs and was like, yo, this is a fire. Come on, bros, let me get this song from you. I'll release it as a song, you know, under my name. And then whenever we have, say, maybe a show or whatever, I'll hit you guys up. You guys can come perform it. But ultimately, it's going to be my track featuring you guys. Apparently, you know, this, is, this was them telling the story. Apparently, the DJ then went on to never call them again he continued using the song up in the clubs and everything it was making the rounds what is up with these Durban mm. DJs like what like for someone who has you, you even said when you when you started out you know you've had conversations with some of the biggest stars in the country and whatnot is there any pattern that you might have maybe seen from you know the powers that be right now I'm talking about the DJs and whatnot what is the issue exactly you know, um, it's funny you should say this. And I remember I watched an interview on Black TV. And um, the one thing I, I, I think it was, I forgot who the guest was, but he spoke about how Kanye West used, was able to leverage off of um, Chief Keef's basically stardom and we haven't seen chief keith ever since but kanye's just basically been on the rise and while you're saying this i actually resonate with that like i'm just you know partnering up the two and that's a pattern that i've seen happen so many times whereby um a person can be on the come up and because of maybe the popularity or the personality or their music some DJs will tend to, you know, use that and leverage off of themselves and then they'll just forget about that person and, you know, they'll just basically be dust in the wind, unfortunately. And that's something that happens a lot. It's not just only the music industry, but it, it, it's something that happens a lot that if you've got a certain, as the French would say, je ne sais quoi, whereby you've got a certain factor, people will use that for their own advantage. And you've got to be smart enough to say that, okay, um, do I take it? Or do I not? And another thing that I actually want to emphasize on, it is very, very important to educate yourself about what is going on in the in the, in the music industry. Because number one, experience is the best teacher, number one. Number two, when you educate yourself also and um, you turn that into experience, you learn bigger and greater things that, you know what, sometimes I actually don't need this person in my life. I can actually just move on, you know, from that. And I hope that the group that you just mentioned now, um, they, 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 they have bettered themselves and they've learned from that, that whole situation. Unfortunately, things like that happen. Even when people steal your work or whatever, you learn that, you know what, at the end of the day, um, I've just got to do better and just keep it moving. That's basically it. Because we, we see it happen all the time. It's just that we get shocked by the people that do it or the people that we associate ourselves with, unfortunately. But you've just got to learn to rise above it and just do better. That's the only thing you can do because complaining, it, it's not going to help anything. It's not going to help you also at the end of the day. So you've just got to try and learn to be um, above it and just got to create a better way. Hence why I said that if you stick to your authentic self, if you stick to your authentic brand, you're definitely going to rise better. That's the best thing I can just say. 
That is 100%. And now, you know, another name that often or another word that often comes up in these conversations, you know, gatekeepers, especially here in Durban, you know, that term of mm. people sort of being gatekeepers and whatnot. And the thing is, this isn't now just from my experience with Sludge. This isn't coming from, you know, the typical guy who started making music yesterday and isn't really that good. And is like, oh, everyone is hating on me. Uh, you guys are gatekeepers, whatever. This is coming from artists who are actually dope artists who have a following artists artists who have some numbers and have a bit of buzz who are still on the come up you know what are your thoughts on you know this has also been something that's been mentioned in some of the podcasts uh, happening like podcasts i think they also mentioned a bit of this and whatnot what is sort of your opinion on you know this gatekeeping thing that is allegedly going on here in durban um it's not alleged it, it, is, it happens my advice for gatekeepers or or how to deal with gatekeepers find a way onto how is it that you can actually don't need them or find a way on how is it that you can create your own path. So um, I can, I could just give an example of, um, again, I'm going to refer, um, I'm going to refer um, to him as well, because from the come up that I saw, he was able to do what he needed to do. Um, you know, nasty C, instead of using the normal way whereby you, 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 you need Maybe like, uh, I'm not saying that he didn't do it. He did do it. But him, A. Reese, um, J. Molly, those guys are prominent in my mind because those are the internet kids. And they didn't y- y- go onto the traditional road of using traditional media. So when I say traditional media, I'm speaking about TV, radio, the whole shebang. They are the people that were basically using the internet to their advantage. And in a way, that sort of like confuse um the, the whole system that you know what we've been so used to this and we, we 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 we've seen as to this is how you should do it no those guys were able to um basically create their own path you know they were able to create their own lane for other people other people to to, to actually go on as well because at the end of the day Yes, there will be people whereby you have to, like, they'll just sort of, like, create um, a stop for you because they feel that in order for them to gain more power or they feel that in order for you to um, get more creative within your career, you need them. But there's always a way to always skin a cat. That's all I'm saying. There's always a way to skin a cat. Use, use the incident to your advantage. And hence why I also said that educate yourself. Educate yourself because, you know, when you educate yourself, you'll realize that, you know what, this person, they're trying to stop me and I'm going to find a way onto how is it that I can avert the situation and move on and prosper. You know, I'm all about being very positive and I'm all about like finding a way because if a person is trying to stop you, there will always be another person who is trying to empower you at the end of the day, you know. This is this is amazing because I also I share the same sentiments right there. That that is also how I've sort of been viewing this whole thing. And and sort of I want to get your opinion on uh, a line that uh, Loki um, recently hit for one of these online sort of challenges that recently came up in terms of he says something along the lines of in Durban they only fuck with you, you know once people from Joburg are fucking with you or people from another province mm. are basically, you know, fucking with your stuff. Would you say that is accurate? Mm. And, and and sort of, y'all, give, give us a bit more insights on what your opinions are on that. Uh, my emotions on it are it's, 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 it's yes and no for me. Yes, in the sense that if you have buzz um, from your own people, people w- will love what you're doing. But in the same sense, I feel that it's people from other provinces they, they they see what you what other people are seeing they'll definitely take you seriously um it's a bit of a mixed emotion because like i said it, it each to their own each person is very different another person would be like no we dig what you're doing and everything like that and we love what you're doing and this can come from your own province then other provinces will be like no we fucks with you we, we love what you're doing but uh, And then it it also goes vice versa that sometimes you have to get love outside so that you can get love inside. The person that comes to mind when I say that, when it's more outside and then inside is OK Manu Phuket. OK Manu Phuket had been doing it for the longest time in Durban. Then he saw that, no, I need to actually go overseas to gain a name for myself, then come back home so that people can appreciate me. And we appreciated him even more when he was outside, unfortunately. So, yeah, that's, that's what happened. But... Um, like I said, each to their own. 
really, really issue their own. Because again, I, I say this because he's the most prominent person that I can think of right now. Nasty C, like Nasty C, he was he was able to garner so much support from Durban that they were just like, no, dude, Johannesburg wants you right now. Cape Town wants you right now. So that's how. That's why I say that it's such a, a, a it, it, it really is a matter of like each to their own. It, it really depends on how is it that you work as a brand and what is it that you want to achieve at the end of the day. So um, people, people in this day and age, people will fucks with you how they want to fucks with you, unfortunately. But we're not going to deny that there are, you know, problems that we do face like as Germanites and everything. But that's how the situation goes, unfortunately. Yeah, and and just touching now, we we almost at the end, but um, just really touching on you know something that you mentioned earlier about Joburg doing a uh, doing rides is that you know they they they're able to gamble on sort of an artist who's maybe starting out and whatnot. You know they they're more likely to 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 support a person like that there. And the one thing that I've actually noticed is that this is this is my opinion, right? Is that some of these like the one thing I've noticed in Joburg is that right now there's like this buzz um around these kids like these 2000s kids you know who i i I don't like i'm not going to mention any names like this is like i said my own opinion i don't feel that their music or at least one or two of them who are more prominent um i don't feel that the music that they make is any better than the art than the music that the artists of durban are making like i could literally count you know like 10 mm. artists who should be at the level where these kids are at right now and these guys are actually making average as yeah. fuck music but they are fucking popping some of them are even verified you go on instagram homies are verified homies have got buzz like you you know what sort of what what is it that that sort of you know uh, joeberg is getting right in that aspect we do know as you said they gamble on the youngins but how are these kids like you know getting all this buzz like what is happening up there from someone who's got experiences in the, in the industry so number one you have to look at the the crew you have to look at who they associate themselves with that should that should be your first clue as to oh okay now i see how usman man is actually um you know able to get up on the the come up and everything like that number two joba people and I, I, I this is not a generalization but it's something that i see Anyway, Joburg people take their brands very, very seriously. Um, hence why I said that, you know, when it comes to Durban, Durban media, like th- there's a huge disrespect that happens, unfortunately, that us as the media people really, really uh, detest. Like we hate it because you, you, if you don't take yourself seriously as a brand, how do you expect someone else who is supposed to do a feature on you or how do you expect someone else that is supposed to, you know, make your image a bit more positive or make or propel you in your career supposed to do that? They're not going to do that. So, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Number one, it's who they associate themselves with. Number two, even if maybe they, they're not making that much great music or whatever. And you remember I spoke earlier on about the fact that Durban is very finicky about the talents that, that or the music they're exposed to. Mm. And what you just said is it's an example of what I'm saying. That in, as a Durbanite, you look at it and you're just like, yeah, this doesn't make sense. And you want to make sure that other people in Durban, they, they, they want to propel themselves and they want to, you know, you want to put them in the, in the light that they deserve to be in. But unfortunately, if they can't even take themselves seriously, how do you expect, how, do you, how are you even expected to help them out? You know, so um, back to the point of where I was talking about the talents and everything, you need to just look at um, the association that they have. Um, what is it that they're doing um, to make sure that they push themselves out there? Because the person may not have the talents, but because of the team that they're working with, that's a different story. That's a huge different story because you can literally take the most untalented person and turn them into a superstar. We've seen this happening over and over again. History repeats itself. You know, if you've got people that believe in your dream or you've got people that know exactly what's going on, because like I said, if you're going to be messing with PR, you're pretty much fucking up your career. And I'm being very, very frank about this. And people may think that, oh, no, PR is just all marketing or whatever. It's just a very small thing. It's not. It's not. It's PR that makes the talent uh, pop up the way that it is. And it's PR that makes people believe that this person is talented, even though they're not. 
one of the other issues that always pops up on the show as well is clicks. I remember a quote um, when I had that interview with uh, with um, Holly Ray. She was just telling me that you know, with her, she yeah. is an artist. What helped her on on her journey is that she is a South African artist before she is, say, a Durban artist. And what she had noticed is that <laughs> you know, Durban is very clicky. You know, you'll find that certain people belong to certain clicks, and she just rose above that because it basically me- means if you're limiting yourself to your click maybe someone in your click doesn't really fuck with the person at the other click or something like that which means you can't now play you know at that venue or you can't do this or work with so and so and so and so what is your view on sort of you know the the whole click situation here in durban i hate it so much i hate it so much it really it really annoys me because it's just like you guys are not going to be putting on talented people just because of what your 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 friend feels about that person which is very very stupid for me because at the end of the day we all want money number two we all want to we all want to do well in our careers but now because now uzama is not you know fucking with Usman Man or Zama's not associating herself with Usman Man, then that means the rest of my friends can't do that. That doesn't make sense. That really, really does. It's the same thing. It's the same thing as saying that if someone in my squad was given an opportunity of a lifetime by someone that I dislike, I would tell them that, look, listen, I know that you're loyal and everything like that with me, but take that opportunity because it's going to change your, your, your entire life. It doesn't make sense that we have clicks in in, in Durban, yet we, we're going to be complaining about the fact that um, people are not doing well within their careers. People are not going to be the people that are gatekeepers. Gatekeepers exist because they're clicks that are around that don't want people to be successful in their lives, which, which for me does not make sense at all. Because you're limiting not only that person, but you're limiting the, 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 the talents that should be shown to the world that is, uh, that is from Durban. So I really, really dislike it a lot because it makes no sense for me at the end of the day. Is there, is there any solution, do you think, to the whole problem with the clicks? It's egos. It's egos. Unfortunately, it's egos. Like, egos need to be stroked. Egos need to, um, need to be maintained. And I feel that we should, stop, we should stop having such huge egos onto it because at the end of the day, collaboration for me is key. And that is what is also going to keep our creativity alive because no man is an island. We all need to collaborate. And to believe me, believe you me, if we were able to just put aside our differences and be like, hey, listen, I've got this idea that I think we should use or we should do, you will find that a lot more people would actually come back to do it because now they're seeing that there's an ease of uh, collaboration that's happening or is an ease of um, ego stroking that's happening in, in Durban that is no, is sort of like being, um, is being, is being decreased. So I feel that collaboration is key. And I feel that we need to also be very honest with ourselves as well as to what, it, why is it that we have um, egos and why is it that we are limiting other people from being successful? It makes no sense. And it's very unfair as well, because we could be like one of the greatest city in the sense that in terms of our talent, we could be prominent, we, we could be doing the, the absolute best, but unfortunately that's not happening, you know? And it's very, very weird to see that, you know, you hear a person say that I'm from Durban, but they live in Johannesburg or they live in Cape Town or somewhere else. And you're just like, yo, this is this is so unfortunate because our city doesn't appreciate the talents that it has. Yeah, like, like I said, you know, quite a while back, I know I'm sounding like a preacher now. You know, we're almost done. We're almost <laughs> at the end. <laughs> it's just, this is really interesting. I'm really intrigued. Um, you know, part one of the reasons why, you know, I started this initiative with Sludge Underground is basically because um, from my personal experience, it was back when the whole 90% South African music to be played on radio thing sort of came up. And the one thing that I was yeah. noticing was that that um, radio was basically, they'd have like, say, for example, AKA playing five times in rotation in one day or something like that, you know. And yeah. for me, it was sort of like, okay, cool. The 90% thing is dope, but I'm not hearing, you know, the the, the, the bands that I, I usually listen to or, or go watch or, or be a part of, you know, play at the Winston every weekend. I don't see a mouse. I don't see a black math, uh, you know, or, or hear rather on, on radio and whatnot. And then it sort of inspired me to be like, you know what, mm. let me just try and sort of, you know, give these people a platform to be heard and whatnot. Basically, um, on, on 
on, on your side, what is your opinion? Like, is radio sort of playing a role um, in terms of getting, you know, the, the upcoming artist, you know, enough airtime? Are, are, do they have any role at all in, in, the, in the culture? With radio, I feel like, like you said, I, I like the point that you just mentioned that um, a certain artist will be played in rotation and what have you. And I feel with with that type of scenario, it should be it should be um, the producers or it should be the um, music compilers that need to be questioned about that because they're the people that are the actual talent scouts for you know up and coming um musicians and they're the people that actually have the key for um radios to be you know promoting a person's music and things like that and a radio does have it does it does have um a, a bit of a, a huge um it's not a bit but it has it does have an in- huge influence onto it because in, you know, obviously, I'm thinking of people from Imakai, like the rural areas, um, people who don't usually watch TV, but they're more prominent onto um, radio. That's where radio becomes a huge influence. Even when you're driving or things like that, radio is the solution for, you know, I, I would feel that it would be the solution for up and coming artists to be more prominently known, for artists to be um, heard of as well so yeah I, I really do feel that radio is the key for people to um be aware of um about their music and everything like that and on the final aspect now um you know with you obviously running itego connect you know what are sort of i want you to give me i saw you actually released um a, a list of, of of some of the the, the top you know <laughs> youtube uh, content creators and whatnot i want to hear just on your side you know any platforms that the people that are listening through right now should be sort of keeping their eyes on you know regardless of whether they're on youtube or whatever they're doing any platform that sort of you know helps you know propel the culture um okay so the few that i can think of be featured uh maze mag sledge podcast the one that i'm just busy speaking to and thank you guys for the opportunity i really appreciate it um general Giniela, that's a very good one um i'm trying to think Yo, you just you just put me on the spot here but um those are the those are some oh in the lab in the lab like um that's another one and um those those are the ones that i could just think of top of mind for now and it's it's very nice because the ones that i've just mentioned now um those are the ones that are <laughs> firstly from durban um except for in the lab and then um what i also found when i when i actually put out my list was number one a lot of them focused on hip hop, the hip hop culture. Um, oh yes, another one is Move Hip Hop Essay as well. That's another one. Just thought of it now because you just mentioned um, just mentioned hip hop. Um, a lot of them focus on hip hop, and not a lot of women are on Essay YouTube music channels. I'm, I was actually quite taken aback by that. You know, I was just like, oh. And then where the women at? You know, like. Except, you know, we don't have to all be focusing on makeup. Let's also go into music, you know, that type of thing. It's nice to get a woman's point of view on these type of topics as well, you know. So I was just like really, really taking them back. And I was just hoping that women would be more prominent on these um, YouTube channels regarding music. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much something that I've noticed as well. Yeah. And sort of what are the, you know, future plans for you in terms of, you know, your platform and what you're doing on your side? What can sort of people expect? You know, you did mention earlier when you're introducing yourself that you also create content. So just overall with everything you're doing, what's sort of in the pipeline? Um, definitely going to want, I'm going to, in, um, feature a lot of international guests onto my platform. That is something I'm definitely working on. Um, also wanting to turn Itego Connect into an actual talk show as well, because I just feel that there are a lot of people that have a lot of stories that we have never heard of. And it's nice to get a uh, perspective um, to hear what is it that they're all about? What is it that they, um, they've they done? And what is it that another person can be inspired from their career? Because you might find that you may be going on to the long journey, but someone else has done it before you and you've actually got a shortcut or a better way of doing things now that someone has actually done the journey for you. So that's pretty much it. And I'm also free to collaborate with um, other people who would want to collaborate um, in terms of doing features or doing like storytelling in terms of like a brand or their own brand. I'm free to collaborate in, in whatever aspect. So, 
that's pretty much me on my side. Yo, I, I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye out for that, and and I'm definitely a fan of you know, you know the 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 wisdom and just everything you the way you explain things and whatnot. There's some really big things that are coming. Like I actually anticipate. That's what I'm anticipating right now. So I'm really excited. You know, just before we close out and give people your social media and your handles and whatnot, just a quick shout. Um, um, you know, which artists now in Durban? Which Durban artists? You being biased here. Which Durban artists uh, would you would you say you know people? should be looking out for in in the near future and then thereafter give us you know quick shout outs on your end and then we can close the show with your handles sure for me it would be um yashna yashna is coming up very strong i see her um tukzin jala tukzin listen guys that man that 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 guy he is doing the most and uh, i actually um spoke to this guy this is one of my favorite favorite artists because i love his music and i love the way that he's progressing in life um i actually told him that he's my musical husband um muzi muzi is just doing the absolute most i love him um tato from deep breath absolute fave and who else dj wobbly as well i'm loving the stuff that he is delivering he is doing the absolute most and he's just doing really 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 well so i'd like to send a shout out to everyone that has been believing in me um those people know who they are because i'm not going to give names and then people will be like hey, but some of you didn't give me a shout out thank you i just want to just say thank you to everyone that has been believing in me believing in my journey and just believing in the magic that i'm delivering because it is it's so nice when you hear that people are just they believe in your dream and they believe in you cultivating the culture so for that i'm ever so grateful for everything and shout out to my parents as well which just for always believing in my uh, in my dream as well so yeah thank you to everyone i really appreciate it all right that is dope and people if people want to get in touch with you you know this is the time where can we sort of follow you online if you want to talk business if you want to be featured on you table connect if you want to just be a part of the journey how do we get in touch with you so so on all social media platforms that's twitter instagram and facebook it's just it connects you can just send me a message and i'll definitely um you know send the message back to you and give you any feedback that you need so yeah thank you so much you want to close out with one of your favorite tracks right now uh hopefully from one of the local guys as well so just give us a shout let us know what you're feeling right now and we will play out with that track Okay, that's no problem. So, um, give me a um, Muzi featuring something so we so That's my favorite song. All right, that is dope. Listen, uh, Zama, thank you so much for coming through to the show. I really appreciate this. And it was really, I learned a lot speaking to you and just, you know, listening to you just talk. You know, there, there's a lot that I picked up. There's a lot that I learned that I don't know. And I'm really hoping that everyone else who is tuning in, you know, sort of picked that up as well and, and, and got something there. You know, we've got the solutions. You know, we gave the problem. Solutions are there. I think it's time that people sort of, you know, practice them. So thank you once again, Zama. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate this. And I hope that we can also do something else in future as well, you know, just have many more interviews in future. Yeah, no, hundred percent. You know how it is on Sludge. Anything goes. You're more than welcome to come back. Shoot us a message or something. We we really chilled. You know this by now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, eh? Yeah. So you heard it right here first on Sludge Underground. Um. Yeah. Like once again, thank you so much, Zama, for being a part of the show. And I just want to let you guys know that this episode is going to be out on Apple Podcasts, Sludge Underground Podcast, on there, on uh, SoundCloud, it's Sludge Underground, and obviously on Spotify as well. Sludge underground podcast we are also on social media facebook at sludge underground on twitter at sludge 031 and then instagram at sludge underground guys as for myself it is at zwane 031 z w a n e 031 and yeah guys it's been a really special episode i hope you guys learned a lot until next time it is muzi featuring something soweto please enjoy
Yeah, I'm seasoned on that now. 